Channel 8 Today. Tensions heat up over a solar farm. Coming up, the reason some neighbors want the project stopped. That could end up costing customers a lot of money. Plus... A toad that could make your family pet croak. The eight on your side warning about those poisonous creatures that are lurking in Bay Area neighborhoods. Plus a muggy start to the morning as a light breeze blew thin clouds past the moon this morning. Can you believe it's already 80 degrees in downtown Tampa? What a gorgeous shot. All right, Storm Team 8 meteorologist Lee Stan will show us the front moving in and what it means for our chances of rain. Good morning, everybody. You're watching News Channel 8 today on this Tuesday. I'm Marco Villarreal. I'm Gail Guayardo. When you step outside, boy, that <gasps> muggy oh, weather mm. just hits you hard. It mm. certainly does. I'm putting it in the oppressive category again today. Thanks to winds that come off the Gulf. Boy, that just kind of surges in that moisture. So when we check out Max Defender 8, what you'll notice is it caught up in that west to east flow or the onshore flow that comes in from the Gulf, you get these tiny showers. I don't even really track them because look what happens as they move in. They just kind of fizzle out. There were about to maybe a sprinkle still left on the Pinellas side of the Howard Franklin Bridge. But generally, that little batch of rain has already cleared out. Have one little batch of rain right near the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. It too is fizzling out, which is why I don't track that any further because it just doesn't really go any farther east. Now, here's a look from the Lake Club and Lakewood Ranch. 78 degrees. Notice the clouds, kind of low hanging clouds. A lot of moisture in the air. Gail mentioned, though, I talked about a cold front. But it will certainly not have any impact on our temperatures. What it will have an impact on is who sees the rain. Because throughout the day, some drier air arrives for Citrus, Hernando, and Pasco County. So your rain chance is very slim. But if you live along or south of I-4, you could see a passing shower at any point during the day. It's going to be less likely farther to the north. But it's still a hot one. 90. That's our high temperature. That's also the average for today. At 608, I do have more of an hour-by-hour -hour look at your Tuesday, Gail and Marco. I right, thank you, Lee. Happening today, the future of a solar farm in Pasco County is up for debate. And if past meetings are any indication, this one could be a fiery one. Yeah, we spoke to a lot of people who believe this will be a costly eyesore, and they don't want the project to move forward. News Channel 8's Janet Jones is live at the Dade City Courthouse, where the meeting is set for this afternoon. And, you know, people don't have a lot of time to speak up. Good morning to you both. No, they don't. Today will be the last chance they try to change the county's mind, and a lot of people say that they will not go down without a fight. And location is everything, and the aesthetics is very important. And it's not going to be pretty. The proposed site is on Blanton Road in Dade City. People who live there admire the rural layout and worry solar panels will ruin their rolling hill hills. The proposal is just one of 10 solar farms that Tico wants to build. The company claims customers will benefit, but first, bills will go up to cover the cost. The company estimates about $1 per project per month once each project is completed. If all goes as planned, that will mean about a $120 increase for the average Tico customer per year. Now, the final meeting for that project is today here at 1.30 at this building behind me. These meetings have been very, very active in the past. That's what's expected for today. We're told by group organizers that there are going to be a lot of protesters here. Of course, we'll let you know what happens at first at 4 in our evening newscast as well as on online at WFLA.com. Gail? Yeah, this is a hotly debated project. All right, thank you, Jana. Right now, Hernando County deputies are searching for a man who attempted to rape a woman in Spring Hill. Deputies say the suspect went up to the woman near the Bridgewater Club apartments. It was dark around 2 o'clock in the morning. First, he tried small talk. Then he pushed her down and attacked her. She started screaming, so he grabbed her cell phone and took off. Neighbors are understandably concerned. The way nowadays is that, you know, it's getting hard to even go outside and do anything. As of now, deputies say the suspect is possibly in his early 30s. He was wearing a red shirt at the time. If you know or saw anything at all, give the sheriff's office a call. All right, at 6.04, an update this morning on the two recent cases of street racing that we've seen in Tampa. The first killed a mom and daughter on Bayshore. The other was on Gandy, where two men were arrested. One had kids in the car. Now, Mayor Bob Buckhorn tells News Channel 8 he'd like to see tougher penalties for drivers who deliberately put others' lives at risk. Street racing at the rate that they are going, as we saw on Bayshore, has potentially catastrophic and tragic opportunities. 
um, they ought to be put in jail and they ought to remain in jail for a while. Already, the speed limit on Bayshore was lowered from 40 miles per hour to 35. An online petition is calling for the speed limit to be dropped even further to 25 miles per hour. Mayor Buckhorn says that's just too slow. Hi, this morning, we're working to learn how a 14-year-old boy is doing after he was hurt in a, bro in a boating crash. This all happened last night on Lake Anne in Odessa, and you're looking at a photo of a chopper that's landing to airlift that boy to the hospital for severe leg injuries. Investigators have not yet said how the crash happened. It's 6.05. A dangerous sidewalk in Riverview is still causing problems after almost a year, and that's when neighbors knew they better call Bankin. The sinking sidewalk on Youngdale Drive next to a popular park is still roped off by caution tape. Neighbors told our Shannon Bankin, this is more than just an eyesore or inconvenience. It's a safety hazard. I would definitely worry about children, absolutely. And again, because they have a trampoline in the back, the kids come in and out, mm -hmm. they ride bikes past here, and I'm afraid somebody, you know, a kid may be encouraged to jump this on a bicycle. Shannon reached out to Hillsborough County. They told her it's not a quick fix. Turns out there's a drainage pipe that needs repair before they can fix the sidewalk, and that pipe is owned by the developer, according to the county. An eight on your side warning this morning about some toxic amphibians, the bufo toads. The recent rains are bringing out the poisonous creatures, which could kill your pets. The recent rains are blamed for driving the toads above ground to lay their eggs in ponds, lakes, and canals. The toads can kill small animals, and when they get scared, the toads release a poison. If an animal touches or licks the toad, they can get very sick, even die. Right now, a group of Bay Area war heroes are on their way to the nation's capital for a trip of a lifetime. An honor flight took off early this morning from the St. Pete Clearwater International Airport. Aboard today's flight, three veterans who are 97 years old. When they get to Washington, D.C., the veterans will tour the memorials built in their honor. The group will return tonight at 8. The Lady Knowles take game one in the Women's College World Series. FSU beating Washington one to nothing. Former Alonzo standout Jesse Warren had the play of the game for FSU. Look at this. She made an amazing catch on a pop-up bunt, then threw to first to get that double play. Way to sacrifice her body on that one. Oh. FSU's taking on Washington tonight. If the Knowles win, it'll be the team's first national titles. Can't stop the chop, right? Know what they say up there? UF's baseball team, they're advancing to the NCAA Super Regional. The Gators beating the FAU Owls in a second game early this morning. Now, UF is just two wins away from defending their national title. Uh -oh. UF facing Auburn this uh -oh. weekend in hopes of uh -oh. advancing to the College World Series. Uh -oh. what are, the, okay. are the Tigers going to show up? I'm not going to say anything because <laughs> Gators, they, they are haters, man. They're like, <laughs> don't forget where you live. You have blah, blah, blah. So nothing out of me. And did you know they were even playing, Auburn was playing? No. Until just then? Yeah. <laughs> That's what, anytime, anytime somebody says that about Georgia, I'm like, if I didn't know they were playing, I'm not, I right. can't yeah. say much. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it is really humid. The boys of summer are certainly out this morning. Whoa. 608. Here's a live look from the Max Defender 8. All morning long, I've been tracking just these tiny, tiny showers. They come in from the Gulf. They barely make it on shore. I thought this one might make it to West Chase, but it looks like it's already fizzling out. We had one over the Howard Franklin. It's already gone. A little shower here near Englewood this morning. And again, the showers make it maybe a few miles inland before they completely fizzle out. But it leaves us really humid. Here's the Tico Solar Array in Apollo Beach where it's 80 degrees. So let me take you hour by hour through your Tuesday. There is this 10% chance of a quick shower this morning, but notice we're already in the low 80s as we start the day. 86 at noon, 90 at 4 p.m. There is a 20% rain chance, but that really depends on where you live. Talk about this cold front bringing the much drier air to Citrus, Hernando, and Pasco. Only a 10% rain chance there. 20% for areas just south of I-4, like Tampa, Lakeland, Lake Wales, Mayaca City, and maybe even a higher rain chance at 30% farther to the south. So in our weather headlines, 
Weak front, slightly drier air north of I-4 today. But that stalled cold front creates even more showers and thunderstorms for everybody tomorrow. And we're staying hot in a typical summer pattern near 90. Meredith, how's traffic on the 8th? Still looking really good as you make your way out the door. A live look here, 275 at Fowler. You can see an increase in traffic, but absolutely no delays. In fact, I can show you actual speeds in that area of 62 miles per hour. 75 southbound past Bruce B. Downs moving at 79 miles per hour. Delay free on the Veterans Expressway. Selman Expressway also looks fantastic. Travel times for the veterans right now 15 minutes from 54 in through 275 so that's fantastic and then we'll wrap up here with northbound 75 from sun city center to the selman 11 minutes guys back to you all right thank you meredith invitation revoked yeah still ahead the reason the president told the super bowl champion philadelphia eagles not to bother coming to the white house for a visit and Eight is on your side, taking a bite out of your grocery bill. Tips on saving this summer on your family's favorite foods. It's 610. You're watching News Channel 8 today.